Inspe have unparalleled expertise in creating and delivering software services, driving long-term enterprise strategy solutions and business transformation expertise for a wide range of organisations across all sectors. That's a lot, isn't it? Well, I'm delighted to say that joining me in the studio to discuss what the company does is Kader Osbera and Klaus Issenbecker. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Now, I want to start with um, what I refer to in the introduction, and this is business transformation. Now, some people think anyone can tell us what that is, but there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Is there a straightforward definition? Business transformation is a tricky word because it has a lot of meanings comprised within it. And if we split up the words like business and transformation, you know, um, there is so much things again which could be confusing a little bit, you know. But our definition is, when we look into Wikipedia, it could be a little bit misleading, but it is in the end to change the business, adapt your business, go from A to B, you know, and adapt to your market shift you know, with the shifting requirements, the new challenges the market has, and adapt your business to go from A to B in that time frame. So the, the only problem we see here is that just transforming your business, looking to a business, could be quite limited. Imagine I have a business running. I'm making chocolates, okay? I'm making caramel chocolates, and you will love them. I can smell it already. So I can <laughs> taste it. Exactly, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, and you both are coming to me. So Juliet and Klaus joining my house. So I have the fantastic chocolates. And I'm showing you my business and say, I'm making those for my best friends. Okay, so that's my business. And you're saying, Kadir, we have to create a business. We have to spread this, you know, bring it to other people. And, you know, just don't do that within Cologne. Let's sell it as well in London. They are unique. So then we are immediately creating a new company. Let's call it JKK. Okay, Juliet, Kadir, and Klaus, Caramel the chocolate company. <laughs> exactly, so fantastic. Now we have a company with a business running. So, and now we are starting already transforming. So what I want to say on the one hand is that business transformation is overweighted, is nothing new. Okay, so it's something which was there. And if you are starting a business, it's naturally there. You have to evolve. Well, you yeah, because to you tend something. to build it in terms of stage one, stage two, stage three. Where do I want to be in five years' time? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, Klaus will come after a certain time with his cup of coffee because he loves coffee. And I can it's smell very the coffee true, again, actually. you know. Yeah. And he will say, guys, this chocolate doesn't fly with coffee. So now suddenly we have a second business unit, you know, and we have to go in and now merge this business together, which will not work. Klaus will say, no, no, hang on. I will roast my coffees as I want, okay? I have a specific procedure for that. Okay. I'm, and the problem as well is that I'm actually measured by doing that. So, you know, when I'm working in the organization, I'm responsible for the business unit of selling coffee. I might be in an organization that sells chocolate as well, but my target basically is sell coffee as much as possible, as broadly as possible in the markets that we're focusing on. The problem is from the enterprise, if you take a step back, the way that I run you know, my coffee department or my uh, coffee business unit is not really optimized in the sense that I'm taking all of the benefits from the other business unit as well. So for the business unit that does, you know, the ch chocolate manufacturer, um, you know, combining that with licorice yeah. and similar like So it's the complexity you know. of fusing the two things together. Yes. So you, very quickly you end up in a situation where business transformation very much becomes um, siloed. Mm. And that's a bit of a challenge. One thing, of course, you could say if you have business, different business units, uh, like the coffee and like the chocolate, and you're focusing on that. But you need to take a step back as well and look at it really from the enterprise's point of view and saying, how do we maximize really from an enterprise gaining the best from both the chocolate and the coffee world in, for instance, how we build new locations, how we combine that. And if you then even go even further and you start seeing the, the, the optimal way of doing that enterprise might not actually be in my interest always. Mm. Maybe there's something there uh, that, you know, from an enterprise point of view would make sense. Maybe the chocolates needs to come in and be the front line in the right. shop. So the idea yeah. really is to, to get a business to, to go through the natural stages of its evolution, but at the same time, getting the key players to stand back because sometimes, as you said, using the word silo, you do get very insular with your thinking and it's very hard to see how to go to the next level and beyond. Yeah, it is. And, and I think many companies 
traditionally as well expect people to do that because it's the way we've been doing uh, business management. It's the way we've been doing transformation for many years. So you, you will, as a human, perform how you're basically, basically being measured. You know, there's a reason you get your yearly target or basically, you know, what parameters you're being, you're being measured on. And you will actively try to achieve that. It's very rare that you have an individual who says, yeah, that does make sense. But if I actually take a step back, like I could do for my coffee department and say, maybe there's a better way that I could combine that with the chocolate, you mm. know, um, that does, I'm not measuring that. Sure. And typically that would cause confusion as well. People are saying, you know, Kadir will come and say, why are you messing with my chocolate department now? Yeah, I'm on top of that. You, you go and mind your coffee, mm. you have nothing to do over so here. So there's a reference yeah. there to territorialism, corporate territorialism. Absolutely. That's exactly yeah. the problem. You know, he's running now his uh, coffee business, you know, in Denmark. And now suddenly JKK become the coffee and mm. chocolate, you know, caramel chocolate sure. company. But the biggest problem is now we are running separate silos. And I will because now I have more pressure, you know. We have no demands on the market, more people want to have the chocolates. So what I will do is I need another transformation. And if I hire a consultant and bring in him, he will tell me, you have to go digital. <laughs> go social. No, I go shouldn't laugh. Sorry, this no. is serious. But it's, but, but it's another strand to add so to, to exactly. the pile of worry, basically. Uh, honestly, exactly. Julie, it's a buzzword. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm being a little bit, you know, I can say that really. When you really work on that level, it's buzzwords you're working for. You know, and, and it's really very much like the focus areas of corporate leaders is like the spots on news. Yeah, we all have to go digital. So we all look at digital. Oh my God, we need to go digital. The point is we've been digital for 25 years. Mm. Yeah, but that's not the point. Now we're suddenly starting to how we can automate, you know, digital signatures and whatever people come up with of ideas. The next time it's all about, you know, we need to uh, uh, optimize. RPA. You yeah. know, RPA is something. RPA, you know, it's, yeah. it's all, you know, automating the process. I'm completely a fan, right. fan of that. And there are really experts who are able to do that. The problem is if you take digital, you know, and put that, you know, uh, in front of the of the horse, you know, and make it, you know, your goal, being digital and not an enabler, then you have a problem. Mm. And this is why the most uh, projects and transformation are failing. What you're talking about, in essence, is companies taking the courage to move outside their comfort zone. A lot of businesses are happy to do that, but Klaus, from the way that uh, you were talking, it seems that there are some companies which are reluctant to do this. How do you get them to actually move outside the, the comfort zone to go to that next level? Because otherwise, how can they grow? So many times, actually, we get in, in contact with also very conservative companies. They come to us because they're worried. Um, they're typically very pressured by the market. They suddenly see they don't have the same you know, um, awareness on the market. They have a lot of competitors coming in from around the world. We really, you know, it's a global marketplace that we have. When they get to that point, really, you know, and, and it's a little bit unfair to say, but when you have that pain, you're also perceptible to listen to other ways of doing things. So it's very hard to go in and, you know, do transformation in an organization who perceives itself as very successful. There is, there is no way that they will change. Yeah, because what you're asking is actually doing business in a completely different so they way. They have to have reach a point of pain before they realize, look, I can't yeah. carry it, on Either this the way. pain has to be there, or you get someone in with the foresight or the experience that comes from the outside and says, look, guys, this will not fly in the long run. We need to do something. We're still in a good place, thankfully, but if we don't move, you know, two or three years down the line, we will have a serious problem. When those people come in, and I typically say that because... It's rare that you will find that kind of individual from someone who comes up through the corporate life of 15 to 20 years. Because, you know, we've been in that, we've been corporate guys as well for many years. You get a little bit, you know, um, rounded around the edges and you kind of, you, you, you know, you, you're in the corporate life and you're doing your career step. You know, you do your roles for your three to four years and then you're being minded basically for the next level and all of that. Yeah? But um, when the pain is there and it really hits, and people get very upset, then they start looking around, then you have an opportunity to go in and say, okay guys, you have very good people, and you have a better way to do this, and we have a proven track record how you can do that, then they actually listen. Or you have a new person coming in, you know, to actually shuffle the cards, which is something that many organizations do as well, yeah. traditional. They sometimes have, you know, the board has an insight and says, let's bring someone in from the outside who looks at the world differently to challenge a little bit what we're doing, 
uh, and that person could also bring up and say, look, we have to look at this. Um, in my experience, from my you know other companies I work with, exactly in the in the sphere, the market with the products or services that we are providing, we have to do that. And if the person is forceful enough, we can do it. If he's not, then he's you know he, he's he's doing something else the next year. Sure. Yeah, and then we can't really do anything. But then it raises a very important point, doesn't it? Because it's it's when a company should um, have that strategy. Because I mean, okay, it kicks in at the point of pain, but. Is there a stage at the beginning before we get there where there should at least be an awareness that we need to have that strategy? Absolutely. I think if should I Should it be at the very beginning of the, of the business journey or can you afford to, to leave it a little bit later? You know, if we have started, uh, before we started our you know, journey with Inspire, you know, we had absolutely the idea to have a vision. I think that's really important to have a vision. You know, there are companies who have created a vision to become the world's best electronic company. It took them 50 years to achieve that vision, but they never changed their vision. So either you have a good vision and start with that and do your mission definition. You know, like we, our mission or our vision is, you know, to become the world's best enterprise transformation management company in the world. And the mission is to provide our solutions affordable to anyone, you know, in the organizations for a fair pricing. Okay, mm -hmm. and then based on that, you will define your goals, and then from your goals, your strategies. If we take again our chocolate company with the coffee, you know, it started spontaneously. You know, it was just an idea, but that idea you have to shape a little bit because we talked before about the digitalization challenge I have now in my business unit, and that's the recommendation. I can go RPI. You know, I can do lean, I can do all those practices just for my silo, but completely detached from Klaus' department or your department or the, the, the intention the CEO has now, you will be completely lost. And that means we need a superior management like the umbrella view, which breaks up those silos and says, guys, this is my vision. That's the corporate mission and goal and our strategy, and then I can go in and define my strategy specifically in my area and say, how can I automate the way I'm creating chocolates in your kitchen? Because we're using still your kitchen to mm. produce those chocolates, okay? So it's, you know, doing the next step. So that's very important. And it absolutely needs to be aligned in, you know, how do we deliver the chocolate and the coffee, you know, to our customers? You know, what's the channel? What's the marketing thing? There are so many things which need to come up. So it's the trick is really when I define my business strategy, and this is why I'm saying just focusing in, on business transformation or digital transformation, that doesn't fly. You need this enterprise mm. transformation mindset. And that doesn't need so to be to everyone be in the organization. Basically. What's that? It has to be very holistic. Absolutely, absolutely. Then you get the line of sight. And you know, the, the things we are doing goes further. You know, people are just focusing on our business processes. You know, part of that vision, mission, goal, strategy exercise is as well to define your business model. You know, it's, uh, you know, most people will know that it's capability-based planning. So you will define those are my strategic capabilities. That's the output of that capability. Those are the products we are providing to our customers. Mm. Those are the different actors on the market we have you know, our stakeholder groups, and et cetera, segments, et cetera. Yeah. Exactly. So then I can go in and make changes. Imagine somebody is coming in, the new CEO we have hired, you know, he played golf, I think in, in here in, in London it will be cricket. You know, he, he will talk <laughs> to his peers and get to a fantastic idea. Hey, we should, you know, have a divestiture and get rid of the coffee business because it's so many things are going mm. on. It's not our core business. Yeah, it's can waiting make the things decision. down. Exactly. Imagine what happens then. The complete the business will be paranoid. You know, productivity will go completely down. So, but if you know that's my core business and I can communicate that and drive the change, acquisition the same, mergers the same. You know, we have supported mergers in our careers. Sure. It's becoming, you know, a big, big effort in the organization to deal with that. Right. So, so basically they, there is a need to get you guys in early in the game so that the painful decisions when they are made they're not quite so painful as they distill down the chain but I want to pick up on something that you said earlier and perhaps you can expand on this Klaus it was a, it was the ambition that you had for the company to make yourselves the, the world leaders in your particular field so how does UPMX fit into that first of all tell us in very simple terms what it is 
and how that fits into your strategy of being number one, numero uno. Yeah, so the, one of the products for the UPMX is exactly supporting that kind of transformation. It exactly has that business model that Katia is speaking about as well. So it's really f coming from the top down of the organization, doing the vision, doing the mission, defining the goals, defining as well the strategies that achieves the goals, defining as well which programs and projects do we have that actually transform to the strategic direction and target that we're trying to do. And then, of course, looking at it from the other side as well and seeing how does that fit actually with the capabilities that we're providing in the organization? You know, does it still fit with the high-level value chain that we have? What kind of high-level processes do we have? And also, when we do transformation, it will help you as well to understand what is the impact of that transformation. So not only can you measure whether your transformations that you're doing to reach your strategies that supports your goals, that in the end will bring the mission and vision of what you're doing, it measures on the other side as well and saying, look, if you have projects, what are they actually impacting in your organization? What does it do to your process landscape? What does it do to your, uh, your infrastructure, for instance, of IT? What does it do to my capabilities of what I'm providing of different products and so on? So you need to have exactly that kind of holistic feeling. You know, I'm, I always use the picture, you know, it's like the spider web. When you do a transformation, that's exactly what we're talking about. If you're pulling here, you need to understand all, how that how impacts, impacts all the other uh, uh, dots that you have in your spider web. And knowing if you're pulling in that direction, is that actually as well what you want to achieve w uh, as the company? Mm. And that is exactly a way that we created a model based on our experience with all the, I don't know how many companies by now we work with, but also, you know, and our personal experience, we created a model where we say, this is how you very quickly can understand what you have, where you're going, what kind of transformation you're needing, and you can measure that as well. You know, I think I, I spoke to one CEO as well in a large co uh, German organization who said, you know what, my biggest problem, Klaus, is it's I've defined a strategy for the company. I have no feeling how well that's actually being implemented in my organization. I don't know. Yeah? You can run projects, but are people actually on board? Do we actually have people with the right mindset? Do they understand what they need to do? You, know, you need to have a way to measure the transformation by itself to really clearly define where you're going. But coming a little bit back to the question about courage, you know, uh, we work with so many companies as well who does, you know, we do a strategy for two years. Come on, guys, really? Yeah, you know, yeah we set a strategy for two years. In, in, in the modern world of, of which we are living in today, you need to be willing to assess your strategy basically every time you have an, an, an impact. It could be an exterior impact, it could be an interior impact, a change that happens, and really measure, can we, is it still the right strategy? Mm -hmm. Are we still doing the right things? I, I know it's, it's breaking a little bit the traditional ways because you plan you know, projects and programs that runs, that does the transformation mm. over the year. It's a very fixed You put the budget aside, you put the people aside, yada, 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 and so on. It's a traditional way of doing that. But, you know, I don't think in, in the year 2018 that you can afford to do that anymore. Mm. Really you need different. To, you yeah. need to be agile. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's something I'd like to develop, actually, in, in this question. It's really in, in terms of the trend in, in the industry today because you're talking about something which is very traditional. Do you sense that that is breaking and does that give the, the concept of business transformation more leverage? I mean, what, what is the current trend? Yeah, the trend we are seeing is, I think uh, Klaus was talking about the model, the ontology we have created, bringing everything together. And that really requires that you're breaking up that silos. So we see, and we have started our journey over three years ago, you know, where we see that certain, you know, industry standard practices are merging together like project portfolio management you know it's getting aligned with strategic planning and application portfolio management business process management so IT service management you know, those things are getting interconnected and there is a natural need for that you know again we spoke about our business we are changing we're doing things so we have to communicate we need to know if we change something here what's the impact over there you know, if we don't do that, we are losing completely. And this is why the most, you know, um, transformation projects are failing. They are not successful. Again, it said, you know, we, you need the enabler. You know, you, you need those new terms, the digitalization, you know. And by the way, regarding UPMX, another thing, 
we have a breakthrough is solving one of the biggest industry problems as well. It's getting the data and getting the data right. Yeah, so that's a big problem. So the ontology, the model, that's great, you know, but if you establish that on the organization, you will quickly see, I can't get the data. So you're then going, go data, you know, you, you, you went digital, social, and now you're going data and having this big data problem and, you know, doing integrations and, but the time to market when you have a problem and asking the question to get that data in that data quality that it provides you high value in terms of a decision making, so will be, will be the key thing to do. So, and UPMX is exactly doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, the, 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 the problem in the industry is, you know, have this holistic view, you know, and this is exactly what UPMX is providing. And we're providing that on a platform which is de facto standard on the market. And it's very interesting that we have created something on a service management platform. It's called ServiceNow. Because most people are using it and it has already a lot of operational data. Mm -hmm. And you can see the impact it's having already. Immediately. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And back to your question, you know, what's the trend we see is exactly this unified enterprise idea. And this is where UPMX comes in. It's unifying the planning and the operational layers. You know, when I plan and say that's where I want to go with the business, but it's, I'm con disconnected from the reality, the operational world, I will not know how that fits, and that's exactly what Klaus said. It's a classical problem. Described. So if you're coming from the top down, you know, if you only have basically a top down view of the organization, you lose the details. Mm. You, you don't know the detail of your organization. You've got to how look at things the other works. side as well. If you come from the bottom up, yeah, you have all the details, but you don't have the holistic view of what you're actually doing. Yeah, so, so many times they end up somewhere and then they just hear from their managers or manager's manager, yeah, that's cool, but that's really not what we wanted to do. We need to budget differently, which causes immense frustration, of course, from people, you know, who work with that. And, it, and as Kadir said with the trend about, you know, um, how many times haven't we heard the question, you know, am I investing in the right things? Yeah. How, how, okay. One thing is PPM. We talk about PPM, project portfolio management. Yeah, it's the execution of the project. That's fine. We have it from A to Z. We can execute the product. We do our milestones. We do our resources. We do our skill sets. We put our timelines up. We have our baselines. We have our you know, actual cost. We have our planned cost and so on. But it, that's just an execution of a transformation. What about all the layers around? Do we actually know that we're putting the money into the right project and the right program. So something like this is also important from a the shareholder's immensely, perspective immensely as well. Immensely important. Right, it yeah. makes the company more attractive for investors if they can see that uh, these systems are in place, the systems that you implement, because they, they think, uh -huh, okay, everybody's communicating, everybody's working together. An expression in English, we're all singing off the same hymn sheet. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and why we do we do the transformation? It's you know, to provide value to the company and to the stakeholders, or shareholders, you know, it's in terms of margin. And when we say enterprise, it's, it goes as well into non-profit organizations, but they have value as well, maybe on a spiritual level. You know, but there is some value. The other, thing, the other thing is you know, providing value to my customers. You know, when I eat the chocolate, drink the coffee, there is some satisfaction, there is a value I'm getting for that money. If I'm talking about IT systems or my phones or whatever I'm using, you know, it's, it's you know, that usability, it, it solves a problem for the customer itself. And how do I achieve that? It's, you know, by reducing the cost, you know, having a good business strategy and achieving a high level of operational excellence in my organization. And that's exactly where UPMX comes in. And it's a breakthrough what we have because suddenly, as we have all the data within one repository, we can, we have all those interconnections and can ask completely crazy questions which nobody could answer before. You know, ServiceNow has a help uh, help center, you know, service desk, incident management is there. And we have the business processes in, we have the capabilities in, and we know the IT layer in between. So what we can answer suddenly with UPMX are questions like, how many incidents do I have per business process? Nobody is able to answer that without doing a heavy integration, you know, with their, you know, help desk sure. system with their incident the short system. Circuits, the, it, it short circuits the way to get to that information. So Absolutely. It's, it's you know, have everything in a, in a single repository. And we're in 2018. The technology is there. Right. The people are there. So you know, it's just establish the right processes to align mm. the people, process, and technologies. Exactly. And have that umbrella view where you're breaking up those silos. But still, the silos will operate for themselves 
for certain things, but they always know, okay, that's the value I provide, that's the cost I'm providing, that's the people I need, but on the other hand, I understand that's the way I have to go, that's the strategy I need to fulfill and contribute. Right. So we can measure the value of any asset in the organization and reflect that to the strategic importance of the enterprise. Okay, now this is it's at this point of the interview where I, I like everyone to actually project into the future. So very briefly, we know that you want to be where you want to be as the, the numero uno, the world's number one in your field. What's your timeline? Will you, if, if we're together in five years time, will you be there? If we're having this, this conversation, we where hope will so. you be? We hope so. so. But this is a major transformation of every enterprise. You know, and this is, I think, if you look into the, the analyst, uh, what the, the research is, what they are doing. So they have identified, you know, three major things, basically. One thing is exactly that those disciplines are merging together. It will just take time. You know, it's a big change process. It's a big transformation. It's a mind shift of people, and you have to anchor a practice in your organization to get that manageable. The other stuff is artificial intelligence, machine learning, to establish that. You know, on the one hand, it's very science fiction, but I have seen things which are just awesome. You know, and those are the things we want to leverage. So that's the future that we say we want to, you know, bring in those new technologies. And innovation comes with technology. And the transformation need I need in my business comes with the technology. There is a famous S-curve of the technology. You know, there is a jump. And if I have an emerging technology and I can implement that in my organization quickly, I have a competitive advantage. Right. But, in, but in five years, you'll have actually completed the S. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, every enterprise is like an ecosystem. It's ever-changing yeah. and it's a moving target. You that, will never say, I'm done with my transformation. Yeah, and, and the fact is as well, um, corporations do traditionally not change that fast. There's a lot of things that needs to happen. So we spoke about the pain points. Uh, you know, if I'm being very frank, sometimes it's also about having the right people. And sometimes you need an exchange of people mm. who's been sitting there for quite a while to really, you know, get the opportunity to think different, to do things sure. different and so on. So, um, but it, I think it's our, it's our, I will not even say job, I think it's our responsibility because we've seen really the light of where we need to go with that. And that's why we're doing, you know, what we're doing is not just to, you know, as, as we, 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 we spoke about earlier, it's not just to earn a lot of money and drive the Porsches. Mm. And, and wear which, the crocodile which shoes. Which we're not, <laughs> by the way, yeah, wear the crocodile <laughs> shoes. Yeah. It's all about being in a, in a place where we bring, you know, the, the, the way of doing business to the next level. Okay. Yeah. And so that's really the passion that we go in with in, in doing this. Right. So we're going to have a lot to talk about in five years' time. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Guys, we're going to have to leave that there. But uh, Kadir and Klaus, thank you so much for joining me and good luck with your plans for domination in the future. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Now we need a chocolate and a coffee. Yeah, a chocolate and a yes. coffee, yeah. <laughs> and not in my kitchen. <laughs> it's too small. <laughs> it, can't, it can't accommodate your ambition. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.